My name is David Baldwin, and I have several horns for sale. This is a Con 8D. It's an excellent player, but I am not. Therefore, I've asked a college friend and top-notch pro to demo the instrument and give you his thoughts. After he's finished, I'll fill you in on the details. Hi, I'm Brian Brown, and I'm reviewing some horns. This is a Con 8D. It's um, obviously nickel silver, crusty wrap, like an 8D should be. I believe this is an Abilene model, so built after Elkhart, but still, I think around the 70s is when this was built. It plays really nicely, especially in the low range. I'm really enjoying the low notes on this horn. They kind of just pop out. It's kind of nice, got a little a bit of a barky quality, but I like that. But it does play really well in all the registers. High notes are not at all a problem. Um, here's a little bit of Mozart too, just to demonstrate technique. Feels really resonant when I play, so I'm, I'm enjoying that just as a player. And here's a little bit of Till Eulenspiegel. So yeah, it has a really nice core to the sound, and it feels really good to play. Uh, a little bit of a bonus excerpt. Here's some Mahler 1, the low horn part, because it's fun. So that's that. I really enjoy this horn too. This Con 8D is from the Abilene era, which includes the years 1969 through 1986. This particular horn was made in July of 1976. I know that because of the serial number. A positive thing about horns made in Abilene, Texas, is that they're built like tanks. They were meant to take a licking and keep on ticking. A negative thing about Abilene horns is that the valves can have problems. I did some work on these valves and was able to make them fast and quiet. But let's consider the compression. If I pull out the first valve slide, I'll get a nice pop. However, if I depress the first valve and hold my finger over the first valve slide and blow into the mouthpiece, I can push air through a little too easily. Ideally, compression should be tighter. However, daily doses of a heavy valve oil will help alleviate this shortcoming. As far as the other work done to this horn, I stripped the lacquer and gave it a chemical clean. I had a top-notch tech remove the dents and re the braces. I replaced the third valve F slide with a new one direct from the factory. Note that the second valve is missing a screw in the back because at some point in its history, the valve spindle was soldered over and it can no longer receive a screw. But this does not negatively impact the horn's playing. The horn has new rotor bumpers and strings. Also, the springs are very responsive and appear to be rather new, though I did not replace them. The instrument has some blemishes and those have been clearly noted in the accompanying photos. Who would be a good match for this horn? potentially anyone. 
I taught many students who began on Khan ADs. There are many professionals who own and perform on Khan ADs. If you're looking for a way to get a nice but less expensive specimen, this is a good candidate. I'm happy to give a virtual or physical viewing of this horn. If you'd like to come by in person, I'll run alcohol through the lead pipe and we'll carefully wipe the horn down with disinfectant. I'll also wear a mask and practice social distancing.